Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and we're jumping into the next part of the Doomsday Kingdom issue number one audio commentary with writer and artist. Here with me is James Milne, and if you missed the previous three parts to this audio commentary, go and check them out on the channel. But let's continue right where we left off. This shot, the top panel of page 10, where they say you're going to die for everything. I forgot which foot it was because there was like a few days, sometimes a week between drawing a page because we were still figuring out the story because it was being changed to flow as best as it could. And also it's the first issue. We want to make sure of it's as good as possible. I forgot at a point what foot had the tape on it. So on the left foot, you'll notice there's more grass covering it. Um, and I also did it on the other foot. So I didn't even bother drawing the tape because I was like, I can't remember what foot it was that had the tape on it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it actually kind of looks like there's tape on that left foot. When I was doing the inking, I did just cover it up, but I think in the color, I just made it look a bit different. But mm -hmm. the color of the tape to the bottom of his shoes, because I didn't want to do everything in pure black. Like, you can't really tell unless you're specifically pointing out. <laughs> and you're right, now I'm noticing that rope is gone. Let me ask you a quick question. Let's say we get published in six months and we're rocking and rolling. Will you be able to go back and put a rope yeah. on there? <laughs> Is that possible? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's not hard. It's like, again, with the tape, if I did add it on later, it was in the coloring stage long after I'd mm -hmm. technically finished with the page. Because again, even the rider on this, this was like one of the pages where it was getting obvious that the rider wasn't looking consistent enough. I mean, even like th this close up and this panel, like they kind of still look a little bit different, but it's still got the essence of the rider. And that's all you can pretty much strive for unless you're going to copy and paste heads from a different page. Because it's also as an artist, you don't, this might just be me, but I hate redrawing the same thing over and over. So like yeah. some days my hand might just want to do the line a little bit different. Or if I'm not drawing the rider on one day then the very next day and then the third day sometimes there might be three or four days in between drawing the rider where it's kind of like the muscle memory's kind of faded a little bit in a comic setting and deadline you don't have time to like just keep redrawing stuff because it's the same with writing you'll never stop writing if you don't stop yourself <laughs> yeah but the rider in the main panel like looks different uh, to how he looks in the final but you'll never see that and you would never know if I didn't say it. I also like how the leaves help flow through the page as well. Oh, I love that. As it's just like falling down. And the, and the dead leaves as well, even though this is technically in summer. <laughs> I just, it's just another visual metaphor in your face to say, this is a book about the dead kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the uh, the leaves. I actually love this, this whole page here. It's one of my absolute favorites. Subconsciously, I also did some of the leaves looking a bit autumn-y and dead. It's just for the fact that a lot of the creeps are in the woods, so it's like, you know, they're spreading, like, disease or whatever. So it kind of makes sense in that regard. And then I like that shot where you've just got Legbone trying to make his way to the prisoner. And then we never know what happens after this point to the prisoner, which I'm excited about. Yeah, I love this because just for uh, to connect to part one, uh, we will see Legbone making his way to the prisoner. So, and, and I love how no one's brought that up either as a complaint, because I was afraid people would say, oh man, you know, the story was flowing with the prisoner, and then, and it was purposefully done. At this moment on, the reader's expectations should be on the prisoner and what's happening. And then all of a sudden, the expectations get averted, and we get this whole other trap thing. You know, and I, I felt like that was a real good flow, considering the prisoner will, we will see his story again. It's not like, you know, that that means nothing. That means a lot. So then we got this image here, and we, we did talk about this in, in a couple of videos, but James, you did that shadow really nice and so small a lot of people didn't even notice it which is perfect that's exactly what we were going for and then that's pretty much it him with some dialogues kissing his horse yeah this one was just a nice page for me to show a little bit more characterization because again you can't really show expression through the face so it's all in like body language the writer is doing some heinous fucked up shit to people like tying people to a feeding post for god's sake is a real statement to that but the fact is that he doesn't hate everything he's not like a pure hateful character and people tend to like animals a lot more and i love horses so i just thought it'd be cool to get a little shot of him just giving ho his horse a little bit of love but nothing bestiality wise <laughs> not too much love <laughs> i just thought it'd be cool just to show a little bit of character but yeah like the shadow in the trees 
I didn't even know, like at the time, I didn't know I was drawing a Guardian, so maybe I would have drawn him a little bit bulkier, but again, that might have made it too obvious. So again, you have to let go as an artist and a writer sometimes. Like, not everything can be perfect, and again, it's a comic book, so it's not going to be photorealistic all the time. I try to strive to make the artwork look realistic, but there are some kind of, like, animation uh, aspects in there, because you want to exaggerate moments like if you saw someone kick someone in real life compared to a film it wouldn't look half as exciting or dramatic it's the same for same thing for comics you're just doing like a guy turning his head like one inch doesn't translate on a comic page it's like on here where he's like getting the sense that he's being watched he decides to like go and investigate but then all of a sudden he stops in his tracks because as it's clear in the text a vicious stench of dead came from the wind and then he's like turned back around and then he gets ready, and I like the next page. Oh, yeah. And this one, again, there's a load of things I would have changed, but the way his arms are posed is a direct homage to Obi-Wan Kenobi in Revenge of the Sith, because he does this cool movement when he's about to fight Grievous, and he has his two fingers up, like, pointing towards his eyes kind of thing. It's like this, it's, this, it's the exact same stance, basically. I just ripped it off. I'm a fraud. <laughs> You've been exposed. <laughs> You can even show the image, like, because there was, like, some people, like, comic friends who were like, eh, it's not that exciting or whatever, but in terms of the story, it's like, oh, there's something right behind him and he's got ready. But also, he's not, like, a master swordsman, so it's not like he's going to be over-exaggerating, getting in, like, a proper low-down crouch. It's like, he's got his sword out, he's kind of ready for what might happen. But I was just very specific in the pose of the arms because I wanted to do something a little bit cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and this next part, this next part was intentionally supposed to play around with the pacing too because the pacing as well if, if you're into writing and uh you know you have an artist or you're the writer and the artist uh that's something that when you have your story together i like to look at the whole thing in one shot on a storyboard and kind of look at the pacing and see what's going on uh unfortunately with how this was set up you don't move pages because we're following one character if like when we're working on issue two and three if we're you know looking at different locations with different characters you can actually move pages around to get the the paging the, the pacing the way you want it but with this that's why there was a few times i actually went back and repolished some of the story just to make sure i got that pacing right which for some people they probably don't even notice it but it's something to pay attention to uh as a writer and an artist because the pacing is a little bit important i feel like it's a lot important but it's very important. Thanks for agreeing with me, because I think pacing is... You don't, like, one, you don't want you don't want people to just skim through the issue, which this was going to be fairly silent, wasn't it? It wasn't going to be a lot of monologue originally. Oh, yeah. Which, again, you just would have blasted through the issue. Like, you wouldn't really have paid attention. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the pacing's important. Plus, there, there'd be a lot of story missing, too, which, you, the way I originally wrote it for novel and a script, you you would still get that story, but transferring it to... Yeah, you get the description. comic, like yeah, that. you lose all that. All right, so the writer turns around, he sees the house, and you got the rope there, so there's no more rope mistakes, right? <laughs> I don't think there's any rope mistakes on this door. I think this is proper. Yeah, the rope's on the door. The horse is <laughs> tied to the car with the reins. And then, uh, and this is actually modeled after... I, I sent a, a reference image to James of this house. On my way to my grandmother's, I seen this, you know, beat-up house. And I was like, hey, here's an example of it. And his door is actually an example of a real door uh, that we know of, because I think doors open normally inward but there was this house that i knew of that had this door so i sent those references to james that's how we because i don't want anyone going oh wait doors don't open like that no there's some that do I, mean, yeah. I don't know if it's old or what but as Ronnie knows a lot i'll get confused because i'm english and he's american so the americans do everything the wrong way so i'm always having to question <laughs> my sanity and like what the hell is going on this page as well like i've got something to talk about you mentioned in the writing video like the door slams open and we had a discussion about whether or not we'd put a, an S effect, a sound effects, basically. And then my reasoning, one, it would just be like this big thing uh, because it would be a big, bold lettering. But my mentality was the writer's now getting a sense of like something's wrong. So like all of his focus is pretty much like on the door. So like he's kind of like, so he's tuning out all sounds around him, which why I like to show some of the motion was just using that uh, welcome mat, which if you zoom in, you can actually see it says welcome on it. I don't think you can see it in the printed version. Or some people would have just like deliberately put a sound effects there saying like bang or slam or whatever. But I like the quiet aspect to it because it's just the writer is just focused on what the hell's going to come out of the door, not the sounds or his surroundings kind of thing. 
because then because then it says and then nothing and it's like okay <laughs> what the fuck's going on kind of thing so i was like that was another thing why i went with the whole silent slamming of the door because it was also supposed to be like sound effects for the grass flying in the air but we couldn't figure out what word or sound effects like would actually translate <laughs> the rope being pulled up in grass. I think originally we were just going to go with a whoosh, but we decided to take some of them out of there. Uh, yeah, you can see the welcome. You have to look really close, but in printed form, it's real tiny. But yeah, you can see the welcome. <laughs> so so then we see the, the shadow, and what's cool is you can actually see the rope trail now since it's been exposed leading around the house. Went to cross on the ground, and then the creep slowly steps out sorry this is an example of the eyes thing oh yeah okay okay it's just be like a plain color i have like and no pupils um the yellow yellow is a color that translates to rottedness to me uh, which is why i've gone with it but same with like the teeth but like the blood vessels it's not super accurate there because i'll say i wasn't great at drawing at this point but the blood vessels like tend to all go in the same direction so that where a pupil would be it would like make an outline but i don't know if you can even see that on the actual comic i think i make it more obvious in other pages but i didn't want it because sometimes it would just look like there should just be a pupil there but yeah i just like the the whole blood vessels thing because that alludes to later on where the eyes are deteriorating like yeah obviously the blood shot and they're just not glowing white eyes what about this uh zombie falling off the porch <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't have the exact words that i was gonna say because i watched a video and i was like oh i'll see him what he's gonna pick out and then if i get time i'll prepare my rebuttal. <laughs> I think it was just to give tension uh, for later on. Again, I can't remember the exact reason, but this is the mentality. It was like, the zombies coming through, like they've been stuck in this house for however long, like waiting yeah. for the trap to be sprung or whatever. And obviously the creeps get excited when they see flesh, but they're not going to be like super coordinated and there's steps there. So it kind of just makes sense that one of them would fall. And it was also when we get to the page where that creeps involved, it was just to show how effective the armor is of the rider um even though it was a lucky shot that he didn't get bit on the underside of his leg yeah it's just a little bit of tension like he's got so many creeps to deal with like you'd forget in the rush of adrenaline that there's one that's pretty much going to be under your eyesight because you're focused on the standing creeps um so when we get to that page again i'll double down on why i did it all right and we got the the skull men coming out of the woods with that little bird is that a crow <laughs> i like that yeah it's supposed to be a crow Again, I was very shit. <laughs> Is there, was that just something where you were like, oh, I want something else in the shot? Or did you have a... It's just motion. And I... You know, like, the, the if there was nothing in that specific spot of the woods, the crow would just be perched. But I was like, you know, people are running, so bird's instinct is to just, like, fly away. Oh, gotcha. And then we got um, them at the edge of the woods. We got close up with them there. Oh, shit moment when the rider's realizing it. <laughs> shit is not going down the way it should i I do like the differences you put with uh and i want to point this out i didn't know if you were going to bring this up or not but um james is actually responsible for the tattoo on the head you can't see it clearly now you'll see it later on but you remember you, you asked about putting that tattoo on his head i was like go for it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you described one of them as just like he's like the craziest one and i don't know if it there's a lot of things my brain does that I'm not aware of. So maybe it was the fact that I've got a couple of really crap tattoos. I was thinking like, especially in this like timeline, he could have like, I had the, the idea that he tattooed himself because like his hairline was like receding. He was already going bald or whatever. And he just didn't want to look stupid. But mm -hmm. because he's not that smart and he's a bit just more wacky and crazy, like drugged up or whatever. I just thought it'd be funny that he just like puts a massive skull because he's dedicated to the life of being a skull man another thing which isn't obvious until i mention it but the guy in the blue we don't see him on another panel and um, because i have him reaching to get his bow and arrow but the other guys have already got their bows in their hands and i was kind of going with the idea that he dropped his somewhere mm -hmm. so that would give him a reason to go back into the woods but it also at the same time he'd go for a wee because <laughs> in the panels that follow like I, I i think i remember saying this i wanted like a cool death for one of them because you said that the deaths of the other guys are like quite brutal so like if we do like a flashback scene of like from the guardian's perspective the guy's like having a wee or whatever but he gets like sliced and his dick comes off or something like just something like really fucked up <laughs> uh we got the rider free and his horse and this is something i did want to ask you about was there I completely forget how, I think it's 
panel three. Panel three. And was there a problem where we had a deadline or something? I remember something with this panel being almost the same image as panel one, but the horse was just turned another like foot in midair, like as it was turning around, and it just barely missed the arrows. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm. I'm well, the, pay, the it comes down to the pacing because this is all a frantic. This is where the comic gets a lot more frantic. So the first panel, like the riders, like coming to chop. The thing is also like there's no speech bubble, but a horse seeing someone, even if it's the owner, like running towards them, would startle them a little bit. So the horse is already in mid motion to start moving because he hasn't got time to like physically push the horse away. So as he cuts it, the horse is running. The arrows are falling and they're falling pretty fast. So if the next panel was just the horse slightly turned, it kind of would make it look like everything's in like slow motion kind of thing, even though the arrows are getting closer to the rider. I just thought it made it look a little bit cooler mm-hmm. as a fast motion. The horse is just like barely out of frame to show that. The horse was obviously going to run quick because it's a horse, and the riders dived out of the way just in time to miss the arrows. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. And then we have him putting a sword under the the zombies, use them as a shield because he's a resourceful son of a bitch. I was going to say, the panel just before that, like, you see him pulling out one of his signature weapons, but he's also, like, because he hasn't got a shield, he's using the sword as a way to, like, ward off the other ones as he pulls out, Yeah, which times well. It's like a cool thing. Like he's holding off them to turn him into shields as the arrows hit. And then that creep that's coming behind him is going to get a nasty surprise in his eye. Now, I do like the art on that one. It looks like there's there's something going, something else going on. Because it doesn't look as crisp, but not in a negative way. It looks it looks really cool. Like how you have some blood over there. But it, it looks like a, a, I don't know, it's like a powder blood spray. You know what I mean? I love that panel, though. It's like close-up details. Like it's... I carry that on through most of the time you see creeps, but you don't really see it unless you pick it out. Because again, it just makes sense that there'd be some damp blood, but you can only really show that in close-ups so sometimes. Like, I like doing close-ups because you get to obviously put more detail in. I don't know if you can zoom in on the panel where he's getting stabbed in the eye and focus on the eyes. To me, he's looking to the rider. Can you zoom in anymore? Yeah, I'll do that in post. But if you're looking close enough, there should be a little gap where the blood, the tips of the blood vessels meet and it should make like a little circle because that's like where the pupil would be. I do sound effects when I'm drawing, so it's like the creep's not necessarily looking at the rider, he's just going towards the big thing because our zombies are a little bit different, uh, which we've hinted at. But I just imagine when he gets like hit in the eye, you just hear like, like kind of like a funny little groan and he's like turns to face the rider because now he's like focused on what the fuck's just happened kind of thing. But it's not really apparent in the print. If that little blood splatter wasn't there, it'd just be a pure gap. And that's just to indicate I I get better when I do more close-ups to show that. Uh, Just because I wanted to show... If there was a specific reason for the creep to look in a certain direction, I just wanted a way of showing that without putting a pupil in. Because obviously, like, we don't like doing pupils and stuff. And then we have the... I bet that was a pain in the ass. That was a bit tricky. Like, when I sent you the thumbnail, like, everything was in different colours because it was so hard to make out what the hell was going on because of a lot of like black lines Mm -hmm. obviously in the final and then doing the coloring helps separate all the different creeps or whatever but yeah trying to figure out like a way of like doing it seamless and then i was struggling to like fit the two zombies that we use as shields and you was like oh i don't mind you can just show a little bit and so that helped um but yeah i like it as he like alludes to the leg bone creeper again like he proper stomps this one (laughs) and i like the crack layering as well that was a cool fun that i found I even colored it like bone as well. Yeah, I love those little touches like that. Having the crack and the crack word and then having the, you know, the coloring be bone coloring. All that is awesome, man. I don't even think I remember seeing a lot of comics doing shit like that. I think it's the usual, you know, bright red and, you know, yellow shit like that. It was like, again, like later on in the book when there's like creeps, like some of the lettering is like green with like splashes of red or whatever, just to, just to tie them together instead of it being so much of an opposite color to the rest of the panel. that It's kind of like you just focused purely on the word and not the actual image. So yeah, it's just a way of like tying it together nicely. And we have the shadow coming around the building. This is where he pops the zombie in the eye. I think he lets go of the pick in that one, right? And he grabs the gun, aims it. Yeah. Yeah. You said like he's gone to get his gun on that one. Yeah. Because I figure, uh, Later, he picks up, he should pick up the knife so he won't have his pick. That's why it sticks in the head. But I love this angle here with the shadow coming up. And it, th- this is a difference between 
like how I wrote it was, I believe, more um, behind them, angled down a little more. And then you get this from the artist. And this is just a thing of like not being too strict to saying, no, the angle is, you know, a touch off from what I said. Change it, you know, because it ended up working real well with the shadow there. It comes back to the pacing again. Like we've just introduced like some kind of other mysterious element, but the writer's still got the creeps to contend with. Like the reader sees as a shadow there. So we're focused on, oh, what's the shadow going to be? The writer's also seeing, oh, what the hell's the shadow? And then all of a sudden, like, because he's not really paying attention, that's when it shows him a little bit vulnerable. And then the creep with the long hair, like, bites him on the arm. But in that panel just above it as well, like, you see that creep that also fell over from before. So that gives you a little bit more tension when you get to the next page. And then it's revealed another skullman, and he gets blasted. And then you see the creep on the floor. Like reaching up to grab him while the other creep's still batting on, but like the ride is not. Yeah. He needed to get that shot off, <laughs> otherwise he's really screwed. Yeah, he's making his way. Look at him. He's like, give me that leg. And then he bites into him. Yeah, I thought this was a cool. So like, again, just adding to the tension, like the creep's now biting his leg, but because he's like so frantic in his movement, he's kind of like pulled his trouser around and um, said so that the armored side is what he actually ends up biting on. If the creep was a lot smarter, obviously you could have just bit him from underneath his leg, but then, you know, the rider's story would be over before we even started. And I just like it. Like, again, it's like actually, like he's, it just shows as well, like how determined the rider is. Like he's now, he's just been bit on the arm. He's got that to deal with in a split second of being bit on the leg, but he's still letting the creep for a split second, like carry on biting him while he like lunges to get the other creep off his arm. And then with the forward momentum from throwing off the creep, he smacks the other one in the head with the gun. And then you get a cool shot where he tops off the ones that were used as shields. And I like the the gun showing through the head. <laughs> Looks awesome. Yeah, I love this one. And that's another element of, obviously, I want a story grounded in reality. I think when you're making a story grounded in reality, uh, especially in a comic format, always remember, man, you got to have those little elements that are just, you know, perfect for a comic book, you know? I don't know if that would work perfectly in a movie, who cares? In a comic, this panel looks so damn awesome, <laughs> you know? So, I love that. It just shows that it's, it's another character building thing. It shows that it's not completely useless, but we've said it in other, vid other videos. Even though he's got, like, a sword, he's not a fucking samurai ninja lord or whatever. Like, he's not good with particularly any weapon, uh, which will also come into play later in the story, I think. But it just shows, like, at this point in time, is somewhat effective at dispatching creeps, which you should be if you're alive at this point. Yeah, but I'm I'm talking more about the uh the hole in the head though with that how fan you know how fantastical or comic booky that is I love that shit you know so but you it's, that just makes it a little bit more exciting as well yeah oh yeah like you could have done it from a different angle when you see the rider's full arm and the bullet going through the left or whatever but I like it as this point of view it just gives it something a little bit extra yeah so if you're out there working on something that is grounded in reality which uh, Doomsday Kingdom definitely is. Keep in mind, it is a comic, so when you get to those fantastic moments, man, let it breathe. Give some amazing art, man, because that ended up being one of my favorite panels. And then we have uh, another badass panel. We have one of the Guardian members coming out of the woods, stabbing the, the shit. The Guardian's Guardian. Yeah, the Guardian's Guardian. Because he's actually the bodyguard to the Guardian leader. So the other video, I, I meant to call him the Guardian... Wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, wait a minute. He's the Guardian's Guardian. Oh, that sounds dumb. He's the bodyguard to the Guardian leader. And one guy's got his guts ripped open. This guy's getting lifted in the air. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and then and what's cool is when we go back and see this story, we're going to follow these four guys. And now I kind of do like how one is... Go well, there's two that survive. The, the guy in the green shirt, he's not surviving. The guy in the red shirt, he's not surviving. And uh, I don't know if you did that on purpose or what, but the red shirts, <laughs> that's funny yeah. if you think about it. <laughs> but then uh, the skull head, the skull head skullman, he is, uh, he makes it out of this so far that we know in this issue. And then the blue shirt guy. Uh, but I, I love that. So then later when we see these four and what brings them to here, we know, unfortunately, two of them are going to die. But what happens to the other two? That's a badass image. I like the contrast in this uh, page compared to the rest of one because the rider up to this point was like so proficient and then we have to deal with the whole arrow in the arm thing. Mm -hmm. And I just, I still love the idea that 
the the skull tattoo one wasn't really concentrating on where the arrow was going. He was just reacting. Mm-hmm. He was getting ready to shoot the rider, but he let go of it as he noticed his friends were being killed or whatever. I just find it funny that that's the arrow that, out of all of the arrows that they shot that missed, this one unintentionally got <laughs> the target, which was the rider, which was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That... <laughs> I didn't think about it as far as the, the rider dodging the first few, but I always did love that second part, how it was both of them in a way one guy going oh shit what is that you know yeah because they're getting ripped up and then the rider is thinking he's distracted i'm out he's not caring and then that one simple as proficient as you can be the one simple stupid little mistake you know he gets caught in the arm with it i love that (laughs) i like it the other guy's still holding his guts as he's like falling to his knees (laughs) Just like I just imagine, like in motion, like he's trying to like, stuff him back in. <laughs> like, please, no, not like this. <laughs> yeah, and then we show clearly that Skull Tattoo Head is gonna make it for for now because he's, he's running away. He's running away like a little girl. He's out, and then the rider decides he's gonna run too, and he's like, "I'm I'm out of here. I'm going behind the house." Uh, he just wasn't prepared for the blast, and the, the coloring changes too. I love that yeah i started to uh, incorporate again showing the passage of time it's now getting to sunset which was a conscious choice for matching Mm -hmm. the color palette of the interrogation room which is just lit by one yellowish like crappy light so it was a cool way of like tying the story color wise together as well and also just made me like because this is a very technical thing but when you're shooting pictures in different lighting conditions like if you shoot near night or it's from a cloudy day especially in this issue where i colored it specifically to show that a storm had just finished or whatever so it's quite cloudy and blue so the color balance of your camera would make it more blue which also changes the color of everything else so like the rider's arm is a lot more pinkish because that's just the op- that's just the m- the magentas that would come through in a uh, cool uh, setting if you were like filming it and wanted to make it as realistic as possible or whatever and then to show how red the, the armor actually is is enhanced with the sun because that's a lot warmer light now because the clouds have like passed and the sun's coming out but it's also again just to show a passage of time like from the afternoon to the night which from these pages on like a real like this was when i was like oh i can actually draw the rider a lot better now and that's when i started to notice the early pages looked nothing like him. The stitching was in different places. The mask looked completely different. Because there's only so much you can do when you're drawing on paper. Even if you're doing a comic digitally, you can get carried away with zooming in on digital to draw details that's never going to show up in print. So I always restrict myself to draw at the same size as the page would be and then not zoom in. So sometimes the mask would look a bit weird in the mouth grill bit. Because obviously, if you had a close-up, which you'll see in some shots of the rider, like... It's like a mesh that covers where he breathes out of. And you can put in the fine detail of like the the hatching. But on a panel where you only see a bit of his head like on this panel with the gun falling down, um, there's no point putting in lines because then it would make it look like teeth in a way. I kind of did it on that one where he's clutching himself. Um, but that was only because I did that digital so you could get away with doing thinner lines. But in traditional, there's no pen that can get you so thin a line that it would make sense to draw it in. So yeah, but it was looking so different to how it looked when I got to these pages. So I just went back and redrew them. That's what you do in editing. <laughs> it's basically a reshoot. Oh yeah. If you were doing a film. And then he's on the ground and the uh, blood just, this is a bloodbath. <laughs> it actually hints to uh, issue three's title. Not on purpose. That's just coincidence. But uh, the shotgun falls, the knife falls. I said, I also specifically didn't, color his eyes in a certain way because it would just spoil it if you looked at close up of someone else later on in the comics so like here's just like pure black there's no like real realistic eyes in that one (laughs) and that is where we are gonna stop part four there is enough material for a part five so definitely show your support and help share these around to other comic book fans. I have a lot of fun editing these type of videos, especially for Doomsday Kingdom, so I would definitely love to get some more eyes on these in particular. And I got more info coming, but James Milne is starting up a Patreon, looking to really dig in and help his career as a comic book artist. And if we have enough time, I have tons of plans 
for as many Doomsday Kingdom related videos as we can do, usually around Saturday. So, come back next Saturday for another part. If I get time, I'll try to put it up before then, but stay tuned for part 5 of the Doomsday Kingdom writer and artist commentary. Thank you very much for the support. Leave your thoughts and opinions in that comment box. I'm done talking, so it's your turn.